Welcome to the first Melbourne Cocoa Heads of 2012. Today, Mark Edwards of Django demos Scala Preview, his new app for iOS designers and developers. Um, hi, my name is Mark Edwards. Um, I'm the founder and whatever of a really small indie developer called Django. Um, you may be using our iStat menus or maybe not, may not have heard of us. Um, we've made quite a few Mac and iOS apps over the last uh, five years and one of the issues we've found, um, actually developing is, is, is quite difficult and uh, my role is more of a designer than a programmer. And one of the tools we've been working on to try and make the process a whole lot easier is, um, is called Scala Preview. And this allows uh, real-time previews of um, your iOS app from Photoshop or a few other methods that I'll get into in a second actually on the device. So it allows you to do um, a lot of device testing while you're actually designing, which means you can iterate faster, which means you can build better apps quicker, which is the whole, whole idea. There's been a few other tools that have attempted this in the past, some of them with some success. Um, I think we've actually done a, a better job, but I'll let everyone else be the, the judge of that. Um, so the idea is to send pixel-perfect, colour-perfect previews to your device from your Mac. So you're working on the Mac, you send them to the iOS device. Um, I say pixel perfect because a lot of the other methods going via Dropbox or, or using other emailing it to yourself or doing other things can um, cause the image to be saved as a JPEG in photos or not to display it exactly 100% so one pixel represents in the image one represents one pixel on the device which again is a big issue if you're trying to get things just right um, and also color perfect we've, we've made sure we know the the correct process for this with respect to uh, colour profiles and the way you should be designing in, in Photoshop. Um, so obviously this is more for custom UI. It's, um, it's, it, it also works for icons and a whole lot of other stuff, but it's, it's mostly for, for apps that have quite custom UI. So for standard UI, you're probably better off just doing things the, the way you would and Apple's already set the tap sizes to be quite good for buttons. But if you actually want to test a custom UI, from Photoshop or from your Mac on the device, see how things work out, see if font sizes are correct and, and everything else you, you need to do to have a, a nice UI for your app. Uh, here's what it looks like. So uh, obviously there's a, there's a Mac component and there's a, an iOS component, um, which is exactly what you need to send the image. It's important to note that we've, we've Try to get this so it works with um, pretty much anything that anyone could be using to, to design, um, including you know just sending images that maybe a designer sent you as well. Um, but it works with all the, the main packages. Photoshop, I'll get to that in a second, but Photoshop is certainly the, was the focus here because that's what I think most uh, designers doing custom iOS design use. So there's actually three ways to send images to your iOS device. Um, we've, we're using something called um, the Photoshop Touch SDK that came out only in the last few months, I think, maybe five months. And it's something that's exclusive to Photoshop CS5. So it's, it's definitely very new. Not everyone's going to have it. Um, requires the, the latest update for Photoshop. But it's really cool. Basically means as you edit in Photoshop, um, we can get real-time images, so you could be changing the opacity and see it update live on your iOS device, you know, whatever it is, a second or, or less after. Um, we also support sending via the clipboard, which is actually done when you copy, not when you paste. So you don't even need to open our, our Mac app to then paste into it. You can just be working in whatever, Illustrator or something else, and just, um, just copy the image and it's just instantly sent. So the, the idea is for the Mac app to be fairly silent and really just to sit in the background and do its job. Um, you can also drag images and it works with any standard uh, Mac OS X image format that's, that's supported. So that's, um, you know, pings, PSDs that have previews saved with them, uh, Adobe Illustrator files, um, Photoshop, uh, sorry, Fireworks standard PNGs that have all the layers intact. Basically anything that, that preview can open um, you should be able to send, including PDFs. We've tested a whole bunch of stuff. Um, we've really made sure this kind of works with, with anything that you can throw at it. Uh, so it supports iPhone, iPad, landscape, portrait, uh, retina, non-retina. The, um, 
the version. Version one actually has Retina iPad graphics in it too, so it's like, it's all ready to go. Um, you can have multiple devices connected at once, so you can actually be testing on. Uh, you can use an iPad as just a sort of an extension of your desktop if you want, um, but also be testing at the same time on an iPhone if you're working on an iPhone design. Um, we've also built color blindness testing into the iOS apps. Um, and oh, zooming, we allow zooming as well. And you can zoom really, really, really far in on the iOS app. And it's not um, interpolated, so it's just, you know, clean pixels. So it's something that. Um, I've certainly found is very, very difficult, especially with the inbuilt Photos app or just all the other methods for doing this kind of thing in the past. Um, it's been very difficult. It gets sort of, you just get blurry mess. You can't really use zooming for anything if you're trying to test if things line up. Um, and it's quick. It's, I'm confident to say I think this is as fast as it gets for what we're trying to do. We've done a lot of testing and we made sure it was fast. And here's how the iOS app looks. Um, so there's a whole bunch of other features we've, we've thrown into the iOS app as well. And that's the uh, URL. Hopefully, hopefully it's something you guys would find interesting. Um, it's obviously predominantly for designers, but it's certainly if you get a whole bunch of mock-ups from a designer, it's a good way to quickly get it onto the device and, and test things quickly. Um, I'm just going to give a really quick demo now. So I obviously need to be, it's all via Bonjour, so they need to be on the uh, same Wi-Fi network. Um, do you mind just holding, just holding that up? <laughs> um, so really this is just to show the speed, and it's, it really is, hopefully it's changing quite quickly. Um, so the idea is that you just leave your iOS device sitting there docked, um, and while you're editing, it's an extension of your desktop, and you can be showing, you know, um, 100%, 200%, whatever, on the actual device, and there's a whole bunch of gestures for that. And you just leave it there, and it just keeps on updating. So at any, at any point in time, if you want to see um, color accurate, pixel accurate previews uh, on your device, then you can, you know, it'll just be there while you're editing, which is cool. And that's kind of it. Thanks to Mark for giving a demo of Scala Preview. Thanks also to RMIT for hosting this month's event. If you would like to know more about Melbourne Cocoa Heads, visit us on the web at melbournecocoaheads.com or follow Melbourne Cocoa on Twitter.